Scientific notation is a method that allows us to express large and small numbers easily. This is different from engineering notation. So I apologize to those engineers out there. In our scientific notation, we're gonna have a number times 10 to a power. That initial number is gonna be between one and less than 10. So it's gonna have one decimal, one digit, a decimal point, and then the rest of the significant digits. The exponent, when the exponent is positive, we're dealing with a, a large number, number larger than one. When the exponent is negative, we're dealing with a small number, number smaller than one. And the exponent tells us how many places we move that decimal point from standard notation. So one of the numbers that we'll be using in this course is Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. That's the number of molecules or atoms in a mole of substance. So for water, that's the number of water molecules in 18 milliliters of water. So when we deal with our atoms and molecules, they are very small, so the numbers dealing with their mass or charge are very small. But when we are counting them, we have a lot of them, so we have a very large number of them. So we have to learn how to use scientific notation on our devices. On Canvas, we would type Avogadro's number in as 6.02 E23. So instead of times 10 to a power, we're using E, and then we just write what the power is. So it's the, the number, E, and the exponent. On a calculator, it's similar, except the buttons change from calculator to calculator. So some will have a double E, some will have an EXP, some will have a times 10 to a Y or X. So we have to learn how our calculator works. And on the next board, um, we'll have some practice that you can try to see if you're using the calculator correctly. So let's first convert standard notation to scientific notation. So here we have 98 million 342,578. We want to write that with five significant digits in scientific notation. So we're going to do the first digit, nine, our decimal point, and then the rest of the significant digits. So uh, eight, three, let me see, we're going to one, two, three, four, five, going this far. The number we're cutting is five, so we're going to round up. So that two will turn into three. So three, four, three. So that's the number. Now we're going to do times 10 to the power. So we start off with a decimal point here. We go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have to move it seven places to get it between the nine and eight. So times 10 to the seven is a large number, so positive exponent. So 5 million 100,000 to three digits. So we do 5.10, there's our three digits times 10. We start here, one, two, three, four, five, six. We move to six places. So it's a positive six for a large number. And for the next one, we're not having to tell how many significant digits. Um, for this one, these uh, zeros were not significant. So we had to specify if any of them were significant. And sometimes we have to do the rounding on a number. So here we're going to do 4.75. Okay, three digits are significant in this number times 10 to a power. We move it a decimal point one, two, three, four, five places. So it's going to be a negative five since it's a small number. The next one, we do seven point. 321 times 10 to the power, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, times 10 to the minus 7. Okay, going in the other direction, taking a scientific notation, turning it into standard notation. So 
In scientific notation, the whole number is significant. So I'm going to write out this whole number. I have a negative exponent. So I'm, I'm going to leave room on the left side of the number. So I have a 3750. I need to move it three places left since it's negative to make it a small number starting here. So one, two, three, but in my decimal point, and then one more zero to hold that decimal point. Okay, I'm gonna be moving my decimal point to the right on the next number, 5.630 times 10 to the first. So I'll write out the 5630. I'm moving it one place to the right. So it's gonna end up on the other side of the six. So 56.30 is the correct answer. I'm moving it to the right on the next one with the positive exponent. So one, five, two, one. I'm starting here. One, two, three, four, five. And I have 152,100 for that answer. I'm going to be moving it right for the positive exponent. So I have the three, six, three, moving it three places. So one, two, three. So 3,630. Let's practice doing some calculations with these. So you should get out your calculator and try these also, see if you can get the right answer. If you can't get the same answer, then we're not doing it right. So we're multiplying these two together, squaring it, and then dividing. So one exponent four times one exponent three equals squared divided by one exponent minus nine equals. So my calculator gives me uh, one times 10 to the 23rd. But we can also do this without a calculator. All the numbers are one, so the math is real simple. So when we multiply our numbers with exponents, we're adding the exponents. So this first term becomes four plus three, so it becomes one times 10 to the seven, S squared over one times 10 to the minus nine. Um, when we are raising an exponent up to a power, we multiply the exponent. So it's seven times two, so we end up with one times 10 to the 14 over the one times 10 to the minus nine. And then when we divide, it's the numerator exponents minus the denominator exponents. So it's 14 minus a negative nine. So that becomes 14 plus nine or one times 10 to the 23rd. So it's good to know how the rules for exponents work. So if we get a mistake from our calculator, we can recognize it as a mistake and go back and correct it. So another very similar problem. So let me run it through my calculator. So one times negative eight times one exponent five. squared divided by one exponent six. So we get to one times 10 to the minus 12. So let's check it again. So multiplying numbers, we'll add the exponents. So five minus eight will give us uh, one times 10 to the minus three. We're going to square that and divide by one times 10 to the sixth. So squaring, we multiply the exponents. So we're going to have um, 
1 times 10 to the minus 6 over 1 times 10 to the positive 6. And now we're going to do a negative 6 minus a positive 6. And that gives us our 1 times 10 to the minus 12. So here's more normal calculation that we do. So we can look at this and say 3 minus the negative 4. So 3 minus the negative 4 gives a 7. So our answer we expect to be close to a 10 to the 7. Now, because of these numbers here, we can be um, slightly above or below that exponent. So don't expect to be exactly on that exponent, but it gives us an idea of where to be so we can check our calculator. So we run this through our calculator. We've got the 1.5 exponent 3 divided by 7.2 exponent negative 4. You see we have two significant digits, so that'll give us a 2.1 times 10 to the 6. So it didn't match up exactly, but it's one off, and that is within our expectations. In this case, 1.5 divided by 7.2 is less than 1, which is why this ends up being less than 7. 